This is a grade 7 math practice test for T and ready. Question number 21 on this version. Which expression is equivalent to 12 fifths x, or 12 over 5 times x, minus 2? You look at the answer choices and you start to see a pattern. A lot of them have these parentheses, which means distributive property, right? Well, we'll get to that. Let's talk about answer A. Now, what I should have said before, and I didn't, which I somewhat regret, is that they do identify the fact that you only need to have one answer to match. It's not multiple things. Usually on the test, if you have to answer or pick more than one, there'll be some bold text there to tell you, but not always, so just be careful. Anyway, you only need one here, so it doesn't matter. Now, they suggest that it's possible for this 12x minus 2 over 5 to be the same as 12 fifths x minus 2. Well, you can have a, you can put your common numerators if your denominators are the same. So if both of them had a denominator of 5, like if I worked this one out, that's the equivalent. See how they both have 5 as a denominator? You're allowed to do that, as long as it's addition and subtraction in the numerator. Unfortunately, that's not the case in this question. That's not what's happening right now. If you have 2, it's 2 over 1. So that one's out. Two and two-fifths are not the same thing, as you well know. So that's out. Sorry. Now we're going to work with distributive property. Now, I'm sure at this point you know the history of distributive property. Once upon a time, someone was working this type of problem where we do parentheses first, and then they end up with 24, and then probably out of boredom or something, maybe someone was explaining distributive property to them. They realize that these are the same. So what I'm going to do is multiply the constant term on the outside, they're constant terms in this case because there's no variable, by both terms. So I have to do this. Oftentimes I would want to see the math work in the order that it's prescribed. So essentially I would want you to use this and factor it to come up with these answers. But if they give you answer choices, we might as well use them, right? That's their bad. So anyway, when you do the multiplication, this is 2 over 1, so you multiply numerators and denominators. So 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 5 is 5. That's your variable term, so that's not working very well. All right, so this is 6 over 1, and this is 1 over 1, so be smart about this. 2 times 6 is 12x, 5 times 1 is 5. Oh, that's looking pretty good, because this and this are the same thing. And then I have 2 times negative 1. Oh, that's looking good. But you still have this 5 here. 5 times 1 is 5. So this is not the same. This and this are the same thing, but not the same as this. The reason you may wonder, like, why would you put the 1s there? Don't you already know? Well, yes, I do know that any number that's a, you know, standard whole number has is itself over 1. But you'll notice that it helped me catch that this isn't a match. Because if I don't have this... 1 here, I forget to multiply 5 times 1, and I don't see this. So I really just do it as a reminder to myself to do all the steps. I have attention problems, so sometimes it's difficult for me to remember to do certain steps, and I don't want to do a bunch of work and then make a mistake because that drives me crazy. So instead, I make sure I have all my pieces there. It's not a magic trick, so I need to like make sure that I can see what's going on. And then finally, put these over 1. 12 times 1 is 12, 5 times 1 is 5, and you have your x there. And then you have 1 times negative 10, so negative 10. And then 5 times 1 is this. But when I reduce this, 10 divided by 5 is 2, of course. So I end up with 12 fifths x minus 2. So your answer to this question is D. And as usual, I'll probably write the letter D here somewhere just so I don't forget when I bring my work over to the answer sheet to put it in the right spot. Because then I can see 21 is D and not think, oh, well, I just circled something near there and I accidentally picked C or something. It just reminds me to be careful, really. If you don't need to do it, don't. Anyway, that's it. Distributed property really isn't that complicated, but it is complicated if they throw in little tricky things like this times one thing and you forget this number in the denominator. So a little bit of effort in terms of making sure you've covered all the parts is really worth your time because you won't get counted 
incorrect on questions that you actually understand how to do conceptually, but don't get the calculations right on a regular basis.